Hey, what's going on guys? John here. Hope you guys are well. <clears throat> Just wanted to check in and share with you guys my thoughts and give you guys my two cents on um, Euro 2020 as a whole. And I wanted to emphasize and, and talk about what's been happening recently, of course, um, following the final. But before we get on, I just wanted to take this moment to thank every single player and staff and all the organizers involved with Euro 2020. Because as much as people might forget, uh, we're still in the midst of a pandemic. And wherever you are in whatever part of the world, you might feel like it's way past us or you're still going through it and being ravaged by it. Hope you guys are safe and of course, hope you guys are well. But... We're still technically in the midst of this pandemic, and I think the Euros was one of the most biggest major uh, international tournaments uh, since the peak of the and the height of the pandemic last year. So to see this tournament being uh, hosted in Europe and, and to see a sense of normalcy being returned, it was such a good, pleasant sight to see, to see uh, fans in the stadiums, to see fans in bars, hanging out with friends and families. Um, it was just it was just a nice sight to see and it was a beautiful moment so I wanted to take this moment real quick before anything else to shout out and, and show love to the players this the the staff and all the people uh, involved with Euro 2020 because as a spectator and as a fan of the sport of football it was such a beautiful beautiful spectacle to watch and it was it was a great um, it was a great few weeks of World-class football, quite honestly. World-class international football. This tournament was stacked with talent. This tournament had superstars, names all across the board. And it was filled with plenty of bu brilliant, beautiful surprises and heartwarming stories throughout. Just like the heartwarming story of England. Because this team exceeded all expectations. This team uh, produced quality that we've not seen in, in quite some time. Uh, but this team did one thing that I thought was probably, for me, was one of the major reasons of success. And, and quite frankly, um, usurped all previous England teams in, in my lifetime, at least, and in, in the generations before them. Um, and that, for me, is this idea of unity. This team, despite all of the, the hatred that's been going on in the world the past few years, what this team was able to do... Uh, was show a sense of unity, brotherhood, belonging, a bonding, a connection, not through the color of their skin, but through their hearts. And what that and this team was able to show that. And, and previous teams, they might have been stacked with quality over the years in, for England, but those teams were not united on any stretch of imagination. I'm not even talking about uh, just the footballing footballing vibes. I'm talking about just the idea of unity. It never felt that way. And and the team that played in the Euros to this tournament. This team showed it. It was a heartwarming, beautiful moment of, of brotherhood that we saw a team put together by Gareth Southgate and managed so well, not only on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. And I, I just loved every single aspect of this team. And that's why, despite England always having a soft spot in my heart, that's why this team felt, for me, at least more special as a non-England native. It was such a beautiful moment to see. Um... And let's talk a little bit about the final. I won't get into the tactics of it all. Uh, I think maybe we might do that in a different video. But it was a big moment. For England to get into the penalties, it was always going to be more pressure. You know, of course, England have this this this, this absolutely like unfortunate uh, added pressure for penalties. So it was a difficult moment for England. And for three young black boys to step up and take those penalties was always going to be even more pressure. Unfortunately for Rashford and Sancho and Saka, they missed their penalties and, 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 and Italy got to go home with the prize. Um, when I saw Rashford miss the penalty, it was heartbreaking because, of course, Rashford's a Manchester United player and he recently lost the Europa League final in the same fashion. So it was a heartbreaking moment. When I saw Sancho... Uh, have his penalty saved it was another heartbreaking moment because just because I, I love Sancho as a player and of course he's also going to be a Manchester United player so that was another heartbreaking moment but the moment that broke my heart the most was seeing Saka step up and take that penalty I don't know what Gareth Southgate's thinking was I look it's justified because he took this team to the final so I won't question it <laughs> I might question it later in a tactics video but Tactically, I might question it, but in my heart, I won't question it because I'm sure he had his reasons for selecting Saka in that in that penalty kick. He's a 19-year-old boy. He's not just a 19-year-old boy. He's a 19-year-old black boy, and he's 
just broken through the Arsenal ranks and he steps up and unfortunately his penalty is denied. And once Italy starts running onto the pitch and celebrating, Saka is, is devastated. He's crying and he's he's got his hands over his eyes and is is I'm getting emotional talking about it, but um it, it was a, it was such a heartbreaking moment. It, it really was. I, I was on the verge of tears because I felt so bad for the boy. I felt so bad for England as a whole because I truly believe that they deserve to take this this prize. I, I truly believe that they deserve to win this tournament. But watching Saka break down was a heartbreaking moment. And all of those players coming to console them was also heartbreaking. And it was, it was a warm yet heartbreaking moment to see. Uh, and of course, Southgate coming and, and consoling Saka was also another bittersweet, heartbreaking moment. Um, but what was devastating and and to be quite honest with you, I was expecting it as 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 pessimistic as I might sound there, because I'm rarely pessimistic. But it was inevitable. The racial hatred that we saw today, especially on social media, was inevitable, and it was so sad. These three boys. All of the, all of the players involved in that England team, respective of what the result was in that tournament, they should be going home with their heads held high. They not only did they exceed expectations, they brought about a positive change of good vibes and brilliant energy to this England side and to England as a nation. From well, from a spectator watching from across the pond, that's the vibe that I felt. The energy was emanating throughout. And I absolutely loved every single aspect of this England side. And for them to be, uh, not for, for them to be finishing this tournament, going home, trying to lift themselves back up, only to go back home and see that they've been absolutely being railed with messages of negativity and hatred. It's a sad day. It really is. You know, we watch sports. Sports is always going to be met with negativity and positivity. It's always going to be compliments and criticism. But racism is a completely different story and a completely unwarranted, unjust, unfair uh, thing to be using. It, it's supposed to unify people. This sport was supposed to unify the country of England. It brought about so much positive energy at a time when all of us have been exhausted with this negativity of vile racist behavior from politics, from people, from across the world. And for these three black boys who've given their heart and soul to this nation, given their heart and soul to the sport of football for their country and for their clubs, 18 months of grueling, grueling club and country Rashford had his surgery on hold to play for England. Yeah, he didn't get minutes, but he still featured in that side. He still participated. He still went to training. He still didn't rest. He still put his uh, team, uh, his injury on hold. For Saka, a 19-year-old kid, to step up for what is one of probably his country's biggest historical footballing moments since 1966 in our lifetime. And for him to step up, yeah, he missed the penalty, but these boys should be going home with their heads held high. But instead, what happens? They go home and their app, their phone is just all of these fucking horrible emojis and all these all these fucking horrible comments. Rashford's mural. He fed two hundred. He fed millions of kids during this pandemic. Some of the parents who are probably leaving comments on this Instagram aren't even bothered about feeding their fucking kids, and Rashford fed them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I get it. Football is football and politics, politics, whatever you might think of it. Rashford has done great things for this country. All of these boys have done great things for this country. And instead of being championed, they go home and they're being absolutely attacked by these vile racist remarks. It is unacceptable in the highest order. And social media companies, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. They need to do better about, about addressing these things because it should not be accepted. I don't care what part of the world you're from. I don't care if that's a norm. I don't give a fuck. That is fucking unacceptable in the highest order. It didn't matter if this kid, if, if they're 30-year-olds or 40-year-olds or 20-year-olds. I don't care where you are from, the, from what part of the world. It is unacceptable to be hurling racial remarks at three young boys who fought their heart and soul for people. It shouldn't... 
it didn't even matter. It doesn't even matter if they're just, if they're footballing players or whatever. Racism should not be allowed, period. But for these boys who should be championed to go back home to check their phones while their family is hurting as well, and they're just being hurled racial... It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And what I want you guys to do is show love and support for these boys because that's why they need it the most. These boys are going to feel the pain. Trust me, they're going to feel the pain. But these boys have the quality and potential. This whole team, have, this whole team, it's not coming home today. But I guarantee you it's going to come home at a certain point. This team has the potential. They have the quality. They have the love to get through and to continue to progress as a team. And they have the quality. And they're going to they're gonna rise through. Their, they're going to rise through. They're going to rise above this defeat. And I guarantee you it's going to happen. You can mark my words on that. So rather than spew hatred, if you're one of those guys at home tweeting and, and leaving uh, emojis of absolute disgusting behavior at these boys and at this England team, fuck you, go back to your cave because you're an absolute piece of shit. You're an absolute piece of shit. You have nothing else better to do? Awful behavior. And I really, really, if you guys are watching, go show them, go show them boys some love. I know they probably might not read it, but... It shows that we are behind them and it shows that we're still absolutely proud of what they've done for this country, for, the, for your country, sorry. Um, and yeah, uh, I just wanted to say congratulations to Italy. I thought Roberto Mancini's boys, they grew in confidence throughout the, 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 the tournament and they brought the perfect blend of class, desire, work rate, and regardless of it ending in penalties, they were, they were rewarded with what for them was a justified result. So congratulations to Italy. Uh, I, I, I have nothing bad to say about that Italian side. They weren't stacked with superstar talent, but what they did come up uh, come to is they showed up with energy, the right kind. And so did England. And I, I'm proud of the, I'm proud of both teams. I'm proud of England. I'm proud of Italy. I'm proud of everybody involved with Euro 2020. I am not proud of these adults that are showing absolutely disgusting behavior at, at a 19-year-old boy who must be feeling fucking devastated to represent his country, to have the honor of representing his country, missed a penalty. He must be feeling absolutely gutted. And to go home and feel that and to see all that kind of shit, unacceptable. Yeah, so I guess I'll end it on a positive note. Guys, spread love, not hate. I know it's I know you guys sometimes might be like, ah oh, damn John, you're way too positive all the time. I try to be positive because this world is absolutely filled with disgusting energy. Be positive, be the change, be exciting, be energetic, be positive, show love to your friends, your family, your enemies, show love, because that's what this world needs. Congratulations to Italy and commiserations to England, but congratulations to England as well. You boys are an absolute gem. We are, we are blessed to have you guys in this, uh, in this lifetime and in this generation because you guys are an amazing group of boys. Congratulations. Don't worry. You'll be back, I promise. And yeah. If you guys are watching this video, go show them some love.